Hello and welcome to my virtual talk on flow conditions for continuous variable measurement based quantum computing. Now this is a joint work with my supervisor Damon Markham at Laboratoire d'Informatique de Paris 6 in Paris. Now this is the only mic I could find to record this talk. It's currently balanced in the coffee mug on top of a stack of books that appears to still have coffee at the bottom of it. So my apologies for any audio issues uh, or bad plot lines. Now, flow conditions were originally introduced to tackle the problem of outcome determinism in the one-way measurement-based quantum computation model. Um, and what I mean by this is that uh, in a model where measurements are explicitly used to implement a computation, there is inherent randomness in the um, computation which is implemented. And um, this led to the um, introduction of a condition which we'll call causal flow about a decade ago, um, to, which is used to uh, address the question of when and how it is possible to map such a probabilistic computation back to a deterministic one that implements a unitary of your choice by applying uh, correction or guiding unitaries uh, throughout your computation that depend on the outcomes of the measurements. Now this original condition was generalized about a year later and essentially the meat of our work uh, involved taking these qubit conditions and transferring them to the continuous variables or CV setting. Now, uh, as we'll see, the original causal flow condition works almost identically in CV. And we also produced a similar generalization, which we call CV flow, which is very similar to, but subtly different from G flow, generalized flow. We also tackled the more CV specific question of convergence of the measurement protocol. And what I mean by this is that um, MDQC protocols in CV are inherently approximations to the ideal protocol. And then the question arises of when this approximation gets arbitrarily good, are we uh, and when are we actually converging to a unitary uh, in the limit? Um, and we attack this question by producing an explicit circuit extraction scheme for uh, the MBQC procedure that we describe. Now, uh, why should we be interested in flow conditions for CV? Well, firstly, the MBQC formalism has been transferred from the qubit case to CV, um, and it has a surprisingly similar semantics in this case. And so it's of interest to look at what other structures similarly transfer over. But more practically, uh, it's been demonstrated experimentally that it is possible to generate uh, quantum states containing many, many more um, subsystems in a big entangled state than is possible with qubits. Um, and so we'd like to know what it is possible to do in practice with these highly entangled states in a measurement scenario. Um, on a more flow specific point of view, um, flow conditions have been used to uh, treat a, a variety of problems which actually go uh, quite a long way from the original outcome determinism question. Um, and these are just a few examples. They've been used for sort of depth complexity comparisons between MBQC and circuit based models. Um, they've even seen an application in ZX calculus uh, where uh, G flow has been used to extract circuits from diagrams. Um, and there are sort of many other examples that you can find. Now, in continuous variables, our state space is a Hilbert space, just as uh, it is for qubits, but it is a Hilbert space of square integrable functions. And what this means is that a state in our Hilbert space corresponds to a function which takes complex values such that the absolute value squared of that function uh, defines a probability distribution over the real line. And we can then take this probability distribution and then interpret it as um, the probability of um, measurement outcomes for the measurement of an observable. And here uh, it is usually interpreted as um, the position of a particle, for example. Um, 
so that the probability of measuring that particle within the subset E of the real line is given by the integral over that subset. Now, this is a infinite dimensional Hilbert space, and this comes with some additional complications, in particular this complication of convergence, which we treat in this work. Now, the gate set that we use uh, in CV uh, is a standard gate set for continuous variables quantum computation. And you can think of this gate set as uh, the generalization to CV of the standard qubit gate set. So we have a Fourier transform, um, which is a generalization of a Hadamard gate, a set of uh, essentially Pauli, Clifford, and then a non-Clifford gate, um, and finally a weighted controlled Z operation. And what I mean by this is that the uh, final operation is the uh, generalization to CV of the controlled Z, but is now parameterized by a real number. And in fact, I'm going to ditch the parameter for the single uh, system unitaries because we're not interested in that particularly. Uh, the only point to remember is that U is a gate that commutes with the controlled Z operation. Now, we also need to introduce the gates which are used in this correction or guiding procedure throughout the MBUC protocol. And for this, we use, as in the qubit case, uh, what are generalizations of the Pauli gates. Now, measurement-based quantum computing um, is very similar in CV to uh, the qubit case. It is all comes down essentially to the gate teleportation protocol. And for those who are not familiar with the idea of gate teleportation, the idea is to uh, entangle an input system here, rho, with an auxiliary system, g eta, using this uh, controlled z gate. And then you can show that um, by performing a measurement on this input system um, in a basis which depends on the unitary u, um, the output state of this circuit up to a correction depending on the uh, result of the measurement uh, is a, a um, corresponds to a quantum channel which implements basically the circuit of just applying the unitary that I wanted on row. And what I mean um, by approximation in this setting is that neither the ideal auxiliary system nor the perfect measurement that we'd like to use are uh, either physical or mathematical uh, in the Hilbert space. Um, and so uh, instead of these, we are uh, obligated to use approximations. So we use um, for the auxiliary system a Gaussian of width 1 over eta, um, which is commonly in the physics literature called a squeeze state and approximates a Dirac delta in the limit eta goes to infinity. And we bin our measurements into little bins of width delta. And formally, our convergence result for the gate teleportation protocol says that um, the limit, uh, in the ideal limit where I send my Gaussian to direct deltas and my measurements to ideal measurements, I converge to precisely the circuit where I've implemented the unitary that I wanted. Now, in MBQC protocols, we're interested in a slightly different perspective on this question. And the point now is um, that rather than doing a bunch of sequential gate teleportation protocols, where I start with some input, I entangle it with uh, a uh, auxiliary state, do the measurement, uh, get my output state, and then start again uh, a bunch of times for each gate. I would like to do um, all of the uh, to move all of the auxiliary states and the entanglement to the beginning of my protocol, and only after that perform the measurements. And so we end up with some. A circuit which looks something like this, where I have a bunch of input states, some auxiliary states, I perform a bunch of entanglement, and then after that I do this, uh, these measurements in these bases corresponding to different unitaries. But now there are uh, a couple of, of questions which arise. The first is uh, the question of whether and or when this uh, protocol converges when I take this ideal limit again, because it's not immediately obvious from the previous convergence that this is true. And secondly, there's a, a question of um, coherence or runnability. And what I mean by this is that when I perform these measurements on these systems, I'm going to consume subsystems within my resource state 
uh, that I would possibly have liked to use as corrections for some of the measurements. Uh, and so, for example, in this picture, if I try and correct for the measurement M2 onto the wire below that, um, I need to make sure that uh, I perform the measurement M3 on that wire after I've performed the correction for M2. Uh, otherwise, there's a problem of, of coherence. And in this way, I need to order the different measurements that I do on this resource state such that this correction procedure is always coherent and runnable. Now, our tool for attacking this problem is graph states, which is a, a very standard tool uh, by now in quantum information. Um, but for those of you who are not familiar, the idea is that if I'm just looking at this resource state, so I ditch my measurements, um, I, to each of the subsystems in my resource state, associate a node on a graph, and between two nodes on which I apply a CZ gate, I, I put an edge in the graph weighted by the corresponding parameter. And since all of these CZ gates commute, there's no problem with ordering them. Um, and now, but that may be more MBQC specific, I label the nodes of the graph depending on whether they're inputs to my computation, or auxiliary states, and whether or not they're supposed to be measured. So here, uh, the square nodes are input states, the circular nodes are auxiliary states, and the white nodes are outputs to my states, so they're not measured. I must measure all of the black nodes, however. Now, the first problem of runnability was what uh, was tackled for the qubit case by uh, the causal and G-flow condition. The idea is to is that if I perform a measurement on my graph state here and obtain outcome M on this square node, then this is equivalent to having obtained the outcome zero and a Z Pauli gate acting before the measurement took place to translate this measurement back. And a way of seeing this in terms of projectors is if I have uh, that the projector uh, corresponding to measurement outcome M is equal to the projector corresponding to outcome zero um, but with a translation before that projector is applied. And secondly, um, this graph state has stabilizers, uh, which are written entirely in terms of these um, Pauli operations, just as in the qubit case. And, and so if I apply on a single node in X gate and on all of its neighbors Z gates, parameterized by the same real number, then this is the same as if I'd done the identity on the graph. And what this means is that now I can absorb this uh, Z gate coming from this measurement M into a stabilizer. So if I have uh, a graph state now, uh, this is a simple example, I perform a measurement on uh, the first node of this graph state. Uh, this corresponds to a Z gate on that node and by applying the remaining gates from a stabilizer uh, on a neighboring node, then I can absorb this uh, error into this stabilizer and therefore I performed a correction mapping us back to the outcome uh, m equals zero which is the uh, ideal outcome. Now the question, uh, the, the condition for causal flow imposes that uh, it is possible to do this for every uh, node that I need to measure in the graph and that there are no uh, coherence problems as I've mentioned. Um, so, uh, for example, here we have an assignment of, uh, for each measured node, a node onto which I correct, um, and we order the measurement such that I always measure the nodes on the left before the nodes on the right. Um, and when this graph has causal flow, then the associated um, measurement protocol is by construction runnable. Now, CV flow with is only a, a slight generalization of this, and we generalize this condition in two ways. Firstly, we note that we can apply corrections on a node um, on for, for a measurement by uh, acting on several adjacent nodes at the same time rather than one. And these corrections are going to map back along the edges of the graph to the node I'm trying to correct for, uh, in a linear way with respect to the weighting of the graph. And secondly, if I start emitting more of the elements of my stabilizers, then I can correct for several nodes at the same time. 
And what this means now is that if I'm looking at um, my graph and I'm trying to measure uh, here in this example uh, the subset of nodes in A, I have a bunch of measurement outcomes and the nodes on which I can correct are the neighbors of A, which here is the subset B. And the corrections that I'm going to apply on the subset B are mapped back to the nodes in A by a linear equation, um, which is given by uh, the adjacency matrix of this subgraph between A and B of the whole graph state. And if I find a solution to this linear equation, um, then uh, this set of solutions gives me a set of corrections that I can then apply on the graph state to correct for these measurements. And now when I can uh, split my whole graph state up into uh, a bunch of uh, non-intersecting subsets of nodes and order each, all of these subsets with respect to each other uh, such that at every step of the way this uh, the corresponding matrix equation in B has a solution, um, then I know that there is always a correction procedure uh, given by precisely this solution. Um, and then we say that um, the graph has a CV flow and uh, this protocol is runnable uh, by construction essentially. Now the issue of convergence um, is a bit more uh, tricky, but uh, we essentially reduce the CV flow case to the causal flow case. Um, and as I said, we do this um, as a circuit extraction scheme. So the idea now is that if I have this graph with a causal flow, um, the causal flow identifies two types of edges in the graph. Uh, there are edges which correspond to gate teleportations and there are edges which correspond to real CZ gates in the final unitary. Um, so if I interpret the edges corresponding to uh, teleportations as wires in a quantum circuit, I can then reintroduce these real CZ gates. And then each of these edges, as I said, corresponds to a teleportation, which individually converges to a unitary in my final circuit. For mapping CV flow to causal flow, um, we, we essentially have extracted a uh, form of uh, the causal flow for a graph in terms of these matrices. And what we've shown is that it's possible to go from uh, a graph with a CV flow to an equivalent graph with a causal flow up to having some additional uh, Cx gates or uh, CVCx gates in the continuous variable case acting on some of the nodes in the graph. And, and what this means now if I do this for the whole graph is that I now have a graph with uh, a causal flow which I can interpret again as a set of wires just as for the causal flow extraction. Um, I need to reintroduce these Cx gates before I do the causal flow uh, extraction. And then um, for each of these subgraphs, which correspond to the matrices in the causal, in the CV flow um, equations, um, I can perform a causal flow circuit extraction. And so I end up with a circuit which corresponds to a sequence of uh, a unitary from a causal flow extraction, uh, a set of CX gates mapping from CV to causal flow, uh, and so on and so forth many times if the graphs get much, get much bigger. And formally what we have is that for any choice of input and any local unitaries from the gate set that is choice of measurement bases, our, our measurement protocol converges to this unitary in this ideal limit. Now uh, as a takeaway from this talk, um, we have defined uh, a condition called CV flow with an associated MBQC procedure and found a convergence result for this MBQC. Um, as a side result, which is of independent interest, we have an explicit circuit extraction scheme for this protocol. Um, and then we have some other uh, side results. Uh, we have a polynomial time algorithm for finding a CV flow on it with a CV flow if one exists, um, and this is just uh, 
um, essentially an algorithm for the qubit case, uh, which was first published by Melimala and Simon Perry. And we also have examples of graphs that separate the CV flow cases from G flow. So these are, in you know, graph theoretic terms, actually uh, different conditions. Now, some remaining open questions. Uh, there is, for G-flow, a necessity theorem that says that if you're doing an MBQC on a, a state of many systems subject to some hypotheses, uh, then you're in fact working with a graph state that has a G-flow. Um, and I have some ideas on how to uh, prove a similar statement for, for the CV case, but this is, again, a bit more complicated. And then there are um, sort of more uh, generalizations of the CV flow condition. Um, the original G flow condition takes into account several different choices of measurements, um, which we didn't do here. Um, it's interesting to look at um, the case where the graphs are um, weighted by other rings than real numbers, in particular, all of the work that we've done applies for qubits when the local dimension d is prime, but not when d is not prime. Um, and then for hypergraphs, um, it's probably possible to extend these conditions by replacing the adjacency matrices with adjacency tensors. Now that uh, just about wraps up my talk. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. What are your favourite flow conditions? Leave a comment under the video.